Hi, this is the Rusted Willow, and my name is Tammy. If you like DIYs, hauls, flips, and everything farmhouse, you are in the right place. Let's get started. Hi, number one. Okay, guys, I am so excited for this video. It is going to be a good one. All right, so my first DIY, I found this camera at Dollar Tree and I am using just what I have on hand. Um, it's a rust stop black matte spray paint. And I give this camera two good coats. Even though it's ceramic, well, we know it's not going to rust. <laughs> so then I go to my Cricut and I make some vinyl decals and I wanted to put Santa Cam on here, but I couldn't get I couldn't get the right font to match the word Cam because I liked that font and I couldn't find it, so I just put Elf Elf Cam because I got tired of messing with it. And I actually I found these decals on Cricut Design Space and it had the camera decals. I decided I didn't like that. Um, it wasn't sticking very well and so I removed that and decided I'm going to paint it. So I am using my folk art paint that Plaid sent me. I love Plaid because they sent me a goodie box. Awesome. And I am using Gunmetal Gray. It's a metallic in the folk art, folk art paint. I can't even say that. So every little raised detail that's supposed to look like buttons or the lens, I put this metallic um, Gunmetal Gray on those little raised areas on this camera. And I think it turned out so stinking cute. So now to make those little glare marks on the actual lens part, I am using silver lining in chalk paint, Waverly chalk paint, also by Plaid. I love my Plaid paints. And I am using the tip of my paintbrush and I just dip it in and then drag it, kind of like you're making a dot, but you just drag it along a little bit and it is perfect. The only thing is make sure that your tip has plenty of paint on it. There you go, look at that. I love how this camera turned out, so cute. And then after all that dries, I just go over it with my matte Mod Podge that was also sent to me by Plaid and I just decoupage the whole thing. All right, guys, today is an open challenge. I am so excited. It is called Christmas in July, and it is with some of my favorite ladies. So I will have their channels linked down below along with the playlist. So do not forget to go and click on that playlist and watch everybody's video. This is Amanda from 66 Kids and a Glue Gun. This is Missy from Cat Crafty Cove, and this is her channel. And then we also have Stephanie from Mama Can Make It. And these ladies do amazing DIYs. Got to go over and see them. All right, guys, on to DIY number two. So this DIY is kind of a makeover. Um, it's made out of an old post and I'm actually making a ring, a wreath hanger. So um, this is an old post. It's something that my mom had. The back of it has been drilled pretty a few times anyway. Um, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make this over. I'm gonna put it on a stand or I'm gonna mount it to that little round, wood round and give it some stability and make it into a wreath hanger for Christmas. So I got this paint, um, it's an oops paint from Lowe's and every time you go there guys, make sure you check out the oops paint. I found three beautiful gray colors the other day and a white, I mean, come on now, and quartz and they're nice. This is really good paint for $2.50. This sample size was only $1.25. So 
make sure you stop and check out their oops paint because they have amazing paint i love it oh i also got some stain the other day too so basically i just give this post two good coats of this paint and then i paint the wood round also front and back i do take that sticker off and give it two good coats because you know red you have to give it a few coats because red doesn't cover very well and then i paint up this little key it's kind of like a face plate um which i think you can get these from hobby lobby i don't i don't really know i think you can get them from hobby lobby so anyway i painted everything up gave it two good coats um sprayed it with a matte with matte rust-oleum two times um sealer and i put the screw back in where it was and i actually didn't like it so i moved it up a couple of times <laughs> actually so here i am i'm getting ready to mount the base to this wood round and i'm just measuring it to make sure that it's even on all sides and then i'm going to mark it on the top and the bottom so i know where to drill my hole because i make pilot holes and I drill from the bottom so which honestly I didn't have to mark the bottom I just had to mark the top drill the pilot holes and then I would know where to put my screws <laughs> so that was dumb anyway but I did that was the way I did it <laughs> that's just how I did it so there I was marking the bottom and I put a board underneath my wood round so that I wouldn't drill through my rubber mat. And guess what guys, you guessed it. I drilled through my rubber mat. Look right there, two little holes. Seriously, I don't even know what happened. <sighs> anyway, so I was having problems getting this through the post cause the wood was really hard. And so I called for reinforcements. And he was even struggling a little bit <laughs> and i'm like he's stronger than i am so don't forget to like this video subscribe or ring that little bell for notifications and share with your friends and family all right guys on to diy number three so this picture i'm gonna show you what happened let's see you know those stories that start out with so what happened was <laughs> okay anyway <laughs> what happened was um i bought this picture from hobby lobby for 2.99 on clearance it was regularly 29.99 so i got it for 90 percent off um i took all the backing off i took out all the staples that were holding down like the oh corner covers um, but I left the other staples in so that I could use those to hold in the actual mat. So I'm making this Christmas sign. My sister's been wanting this. She's been wanting me to make her this sign since last year. And so I'm just showing you how I'm doing it. So basically, I'm going to do a reverse stencil. Now, if you, there's some colorful words in here. So if you're not into that, um, I'm just going to warn you now. Close your eyes. Okay, so I make this stencil and I put the colors where I so I want different colors underneath these words so when I tear when I tear off when I weed out the stencil um, those colors will show through because I'm gonna paint the top of this white so um, I paint on that red is actually folk art color and it is uh, deep tomato red the green is a beautiful green oh my goodness and it is bright green and then that is just black Waverly chalk paint all from plaid so I um, put my stencil down and I I seal in the stencil with the actual color over the top of it after I get my stencil in place um, or get my vinyl in place I am actually using Dollar Tree vinyl on this and then I go over it with two coats of white Waverly chalk paint so now I am 
distressing the frame with white Waverly chalk paint. And that's all I do. And I'm not going to show you a lot of this because um, you'll see here in a minute why. But um, so I start to weed the letters and looky there, the red peeled right off. It left like a pink stain. Don't understand why. I did all the paint and look at that. <laughs> Let me show you in show mo slow motion. It rips off a whole bunch of paint, like just tears it right off. There's no way to save that. So anywho, I was uh, very upset, um, but I guess I must have still been in shock because I continued to weed the thing. I don't know why if I thought I was going to go over it and try to save it, but the red did not turn out um, on any of it. But look at that car. I mean, that car turned out amazing. No, it didn't pull up any of the green paint whatsoever. So I think that the red paint, I know it's really old. So I think it was just too old and too thick and it didn't cure. Even though I let it set overnight, I did everything I was supposed to do um, to make sure that this was going to turn out right. And it still did not turn out right. So also with that Dollar Tree vinyl, um, it's really thin, so my blade cut through the vinyl and the backing, and the backing stuck really bad to the mat. Like, it reminded me of Cricut Vinyl when it first came out. Like, it's, it weeds fine, but um, it also left a sticky residue on that sign. So after I realized that the sticky residue wasn't going to come off, I was like, okay, we have to start over. So I started over with a Dollar Tree sign from Halloween that I picked up last year. Uh, this is a quick tip. Make sure when you're doing a large stencil that you leave the backing on your, oh gosh, now I lost my words, on your transfer tape because um, if you stick it down, you might be stuck wherever you stick it because I was just lucky enough that it pulled up fine for me, which <sighs> amazing. It pulled up fine um, with all the other trouble that I was having with the stencil. So anyway, just a tip, leave that backing on until you're ready to put it down in place. So I made another stencil without the car because it took so much time to weed the car. And then of course the car turned out beautiful on the other sign, I just put three Christmas trees on this one. Um, I will finish the back. This sign is for my sister. And honestly, I don't even know if she's going to like it because it, if it doesn't match her Christmas decor, she won't put it out. <clears throat> All right, guys, don't forget that the playlist for this challenge will be listed down below in my description box, along with the links to these ladies' channels. On to DIY number four. All right, guys. This is going to be an easy one because I had so much trouble with the other one and I was going to do something different, but I just thought, you know what, let's just get this easy one. So, um, obviously you've probably figured out that my movie that I chose to do DIYs from is the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This is my sister's favorite movie and I know that she wanted that other sign for Christmas. So I made her this other shelf setter, shelf setter. I can't even say that shelf setter. Anyway, I made her this sign and that sign that I made her, I actually picked that up at a thrift store for maybe 25. So that was super fast. All right, guys, let's get to the final reveal. I hope you like these DIYs and I hope nobody is offended. If you are, I'm sorry, but, um, it's all in good fun. So I hope you all have a sense of humor. <laughs> I love how that elf cam turned out. Actually, I love how all the DIYs turned out. I just wish the other one would have turned out better because that was a huge fail. And I spent a lot of time on it. So that was kind of disheartening, but here is what the wreath holder looks like. I love how this turned out. 
and that is just a wreath that I put on my craft room door on the outside for Christmas. It's super cute. And here it is without the wreath. I want to thank you guys for stopping by today. I want to thank all my subscribers. I have a lot of new subscribers lately, and I so appreciate you so much. I have enjoyed talking to you guys this week. We have had some great conversations. And continue to stop by. I will see you in the next one. And here's some more videos that you guys might like as well. Bye.